I got a little story to share with y'all. Me and my buddy are riding around some back roads in rural Tennessee at like 3 in the morning. Neither of us have ever really had any paranormal experiences. Driving down a road we're very familiar with as we rode down it almost every day. Something appears out of nowhere in front of his car. It's a fucking dog man. Fear immediately overwhelms my entire body. Now, I don't mean like a werewolf or some stupid Halloween shit. Honest to God. Half domesticated dog, half man. It looks sickly and disgusting and is mostly bald except for some small patches of yellowish white hair. Hair color almost looks like as if it was rolling around in piss or something. Stood upright on two legs at around five to six feet tall. I honestly can't believe my eyes. Convinced that I've gone batshit crazy, my buddy starts swerving. I look over and see a look of fear on his face. Realize he saw the same thing. Well, guess my going insane theory wasn't too accurate. We get a good bit down the road when we start asking each other if we both saw the same thing. He describes it exactly how I saw it. He even called it a dog man. Now, there are no urban legends or cryptid sightings in my area, and I can assure you neither of us had even thought the word dog man till that night. Obviously, we're both very concerned, but we just go back to his house and try to get some sleep. Never saw the dog man again, nor have we really talked about it. I used to live in Tennessee and saw a dog man as well on the outskirts of the woods. It was foggy and hard to see, but I saw the silhouette of a dog man. There seems to be a lot of Tennessee friends on X. I have an uncle who used to live in the Catskills. One time when I visited his house, he asked me if I wanted to see something freaky. I said, sure, so we got in his truck, drove way up into the mountains, and pulled into an overgrown path. Right as you pull into it, you can clearly see a burned down foundation of an old house. It had to have been very old though because it looked completely undisturbed. He shut off his truck and a few seconds after he did, the radio started to pick up. You could just barely hear the voices of people screaming and crying, with fire burning in the background. It was fucked up. Be me, three years ago. Homeless, crash outside McDonald's because sometimes people give me food or they leave fries in the bottom of their bag when they throw it out. Man in a hoodie, face mask, unusual for back then because no COVID, and glasses, comes up to me says he has a deal. I hold something for him out of sight and stay by McDonald's for five more hours. He says he'll give me $100 cash. I think it's bullshit, but who cares? I'm always here anyway. Man hands me small box, maybe 10 centimeters length, six centimeters wide, and five centimeters tall. Box is warm. I put it in my bag and he walks off. Five hours later, man returns. Gives me $100 cash in return for the box. Asks me if I'd like to do this again. I say sure. For the next four weeks, every day, he brings this box. Sometimes during the five hours, he comes and swaps it out for another one randomly. Box is a great hand warmer on cold days. One day, he comes in. Says, this is the last time I can do this. I'm sad because no more free money after today. He hands me the box and walks off. Start to think about life, what I'm going to do now. He gave me so much money and I blew it all like an idiot. And I'm still homeless. And this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I wasted it. This time, he is hours late. When he arrives, he hands me a rubbish bag in return for the box. Walks off without another word. Bag has loads of cash in it. I can't believe my eyes. Book a hotel room to count it because it's just so much money. After counting, there is $75,000 in cash, all in 20s. 
use the money to turn my life around. I'm no longer homeless and have a job at Walmart. What the fuck was that box? It rattled when I shook it, and it was decently warm. I've got a pretty spooby one here. I promise I'm not bullshitting. When I was around four to five years old, I absolutely, definitely had a friend called Nicole. But everyone I knew at that time denies her existence. She and I always played out in my backyard. She lived up my road in a house on the corner, and my friend Sam, who does exist, saw him today, was with us most of the time. Now he and my mother both say that there was no girl, and it was just me and Sam. Her house is owned by some black family and she's not in any old photos. I know for sure that she's real and have extremely vivid memories of going to church with her and building Lego with only red blocks. I also can't find her on Facebook or on any other social networks. Be eight year old kid in the 90s. At a friend's house after school. Friend's family has extensive VHS collection we're going through them trying to find a movie to watch. Friend gets called upstairs by his dad. Dad was a bit of a hard ass. I think he was in trouble for something. Continue going through VHS tapes. Finally find one I want to watch. I think it was one of the Ernest movies. Except the tape doesn't match the cover. It's missing the label with the movie title. Put it in the VCR. It's a home movie. Looks like they must have set up a tripod in the doorway of the living room because you can see the whole room in a wide shot. Dad and mom are sitting on the couch, spaced apart. Friend and his sister are each in a chair, opposite of them. Wait 30 seconds to happen. Nothing does. Press fast forward. They're literally just sitting there, not even talking or moving. Get the feeling there's something weird and fucked up about this. Hear my friend coming downstairs. Quickly eject the tape and put it back. Never ask him about it. He moves away. Still think about this sometimes. 16. Showering after work, around 9pm. Parents and siblings in living room, watching television. Lock bathroom doors because goober siblings sometimes walk in. Rinsing off, notice a shadow behind the shower curtain. Remove curtain, see a hand. Just a totally black right hand. Devoid of light, like a perfect shadow, slowly drifts towards light switch. The second it touches the switch, lights go off. Stand there in the running water trying to process what the fuck just happened. After a few seconds, come to. Throw curtains aside and flick the lights back on. Nothing in the room. Turn water off. Get out. Nervously ask if anyone was near the bathroom. No, we knew you were in the shower. Next three months, power tools outside would turn on seemingly at will. Grinders, drill press, random tool turning on by itself at 4 a.m. every day for months. Extension cords running out the parked fifth wheel unplugged and thrown across the yard. Persists for a few months, then stops entirely. B-17, have a really bad fever. Laying alone in room, nobody else in house. Mind drifting. Start thinking about a childhood dog that's long since passed. Close eyes, trying to sleep. Hear heavy thuds come from end of room to bed. Then, a sudden weight placed on top of me. Just like how my dog would jump on my bed whenever I was laying down sick. I didn't feel scared or even alarmed. I think I knew what it was. My mother had some odd things happen to her when she was younger. My grandmother, too. Here's one she told me. Be grandmother, six or seven years old. Her grandfather passes away. Never met him personally. Day after funeral. Standing at corner waiting to cross the street. Older man walks beside her. Starts to talk. Asks her why she's sad. She explains. Older fellow explains that death is a natural part of life. That her grandfather is proud of her, even though they weren't very close. And that she should be happy he was in her life. Grandmother crosses the street. Family friend was on the other side, watching her. And on that, who were you talking to? Grandmother describes the nice man, down to the clothes he was wearing. Family friend recognizes immediately that she's describing her grandfather, one of his friends. 
he tells her not to talk to strangers anymore and sends her along. Be grandmother, still young. Have an imaginary friend named George. George would hang out, play around, move or misplace things sometimes. George would sometimes move things in front of her. Great-grandfather wondering how Cup moved from directly before her on the ground to on top of the refrigerator. George did it. Be grandmother, late 20s. Get pet cat for daughter. My mother, around six or seven. Mom's really attached to the cat. Takes it everywhere. Cat gets sick. Passes away. Mother distraught. Grandmother, too. For years after, mother and grandmother claim to see cat's shadow or form in the corner of their eye, darting in or out of the rooms, etc. Years later, my younger sister is born. First birthday, we gather for a picture. Grandmother, mother, me, and sister. To the right of my sister is a very distinct but fuzzy outline of a cat. We didn't have a cat. Be a non-mom, four or five. Live adjacent to the church's graveyard. Playing hide-and-go-seek with other kids in the graveyard. They're hiding way too well, moving a lot faster than her. Grandmother comes by looking for her. What are you doing playing around here? You could get hurt. I'm playing with my friends. Nobody else in the graveyard. Grandmother kept her out of it from that point on. My grandmother says she personally knew Anton LaVey, that he was interested in her connection to spirits, as he put it. She says she has a picture of them together somewhere. I hope to find it at some point. Maybe it's because of that, or her parents' Freemason connections, that these weird happenings follow us.